right. All right, all right, all right. Where are we going to go with this? Yo, what is up, guys? Do see here. Welcome to another video. We are over here at Alamo Cycleplex, just outside of San Antonio, Texas. As always, this video is brought to you by Rollick. Rollick is a company connecting consumers like you and me to a network of certified dealers like Alamo Cycleplex. This is my man, Josh. He's been hooking it up today over here at Cycleplex. Hit him up. Link in the description down below. We just took out the beautiful CBR300R, the Honda Super Cub, and now the Kawasaki Ninja 650. You guys have been waiting. I have received many comments, which means you say something and I do it. So comment below if you have a bike that you want me to review and I will do the best that I can to get to that bike. I know that people want me to ride Royal Enfields. Uh, I know there's some Hondas that you want to ride. Be more specific. Put them down in the description below. I'll do the best that I can over the next few weeks to wrap that up. But uh, let's just jump right into this. We'll do a walk around, we'll get some specs on the board in a little bit here. But for now, let's just ride a bike. That's what we're here to do, right? Here to ride a motorcycle. Oh, real quick, see those sunglasses? They're the coolest in the world. They're from Sunski. I'm gonna link them in the description below. They're tree lines, and they are basically the sunglasses that Everest people wear when they summit a mountain. Uh, super cool company, they sent me these and I just wanna plug them because guess what? Not many people send me stuff, so if you send me things, you get plugged like that on a video like this. Okay, one thing I should mention, it's so hot in San Antonio today that my GoPro mount is melting. So I'm going to do the best I can to keep my GoPro as secure as possible. I have literally never dealt with this before. Uh, but yeah, my stuff is starting to melt. So thank you, Texas and the sun for the life that you supply and the death that you give me. Oh my God, I can't wait. So I've been on two very low displacement motorcycles. Uh, it toted as being more entry level. This is a mid-range bike, a 650cc. It is a proper motorbike. Makes a very beautiful amount of power. We'll get into all of those statistics real quick. Like if you can see, we've got a digital speedometer, digital gear indicator, the clock. We've got a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, um, basically everything you would need, and then an analog tachometer. I'm gonna leave the bike here for just uh, a minute, let it warm up. They warmed them up already for me, which is really, really nice of them, but I like to warm them up too. Oh, this feels really good. Oh my God, this thing hauls. Please see me, you no looking bad star. Oh my God, the Ninja 650, the best of both worlds, perhaps. Super sport styling with a upright standard comfort. <gasps> oh my God, I'm so excited. All right, you guys have been telling me to ride this bike forever. Um, let me think about things that I've ridden from Kawasaki. Uh, I just got off their ZX6R. I just rode their Vulcan S. Both bikes I loved. Um, well, that's not true. I liked the 636. I think it's a fantastic super sport bike in the mid-range, but it was relatively uncomfortable and that kind of affected my experience, whereas the Vulcan really surprised me because I had low expectations of it. The 650, I have barely any expectations for, and it's simply because it's never been on my radar before. It's got a very standard upright riding position similar to like a Yamaha FZ6 or even FZ07. It's Kind of more standard and upright than that it reminds me of a, a bmw s1000 xr in how upright i feel uh, but at the end of the day it's got this beautiful twin 650 that is producing heaps of power always about the power This goes to show you how ridiculously nimble and flexible the 650 here from Kawasaki is. This bike can do most everything. Of course, it's not an adventure machine and is uncapable off road. But as a street bike, this is the best of both worlds. I cannot stress that enough. It's a sport bike with touring characteristics. It's not a touring bike with some sporty features. No, no, no. The only thing that I would say that this bike needs right off the bat is probably a quick shifter, maybe an adjustable windscreen, and quite possibly, well gosh, I think that's it. And those two things can be pretty well fixed. 
So Kawasaki comes out shooting. I'll tell you what, I'm having an allergic reaction to something. My throat feels as though it's closing up. I cannot breathe. Power delivery is absolutely gorgeous. You're gonna see me roll on throttle quite often and that's because there's nothing but straight roads here. In San Antonio, I have desperately tried to, to find twisties and it is killing me. I miss the Appalachian Mountains, Joplin Road, and Clifton, Virginia more than anything in the world. If you're from San Antonio and you know where the curvy twisty roads are, please pick me up at daycare and take me for a ride because I'm dying over here. I'm desperate for it. Everything is straight as an arrow. I bet you we are in the direct line of sight of Vegas. This road probably doesn't change for the next 3,000 miles. This is a commuter bike. I'm going to say it here. Yes, it could be a weekend warrior, but no, it's no Panigale. It's no 636. It's no freaking Ninja 400. We're going to go back to the same church we were at and chit chat about some bit spat. This is a traditional six speed manual, one down, five up transmission here. No quick shifter, no auto blipper, not many frills and gills. I'm making words up now. The front suspension is non-adjustable. The rear, all you have is preload. So that is one of the more major things I think that could be uh, updated on this bike, albeit for the cost of entry, which we will discuss briefly. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I love the styling. I think this tank is kind of interesting and unique in the fact that it slenders down, but I actually really dig that. I think it's pretty. I think the bike's got a lot of beautiful character to it. I think it's unique and not trying desperately to look like every other mid-weight sport touring-ish bike that's on the market these days. Where are the rattlesnakes? I know they're coming for me. You can see the wind protection is very strong when you are in your standard upright riding position. Albeit when you do get into a tuck, some weird buffeting starts happening. I've noticed that from earlier when I was riding this bike on the highway, before the GoPro almost fell off my helmet and disintegrated into a million pieces. Albeit, because I'm a terrible vlogger, I do not have any of that on tape. Transmission's exceptionally smooth. I am shifting unnecessarily through the gears here. I'm in fourth, whereas I could certainly be in second. But guess what? That's what testing a motorcycle is. You do things that are unnecessary to give people consumer advice about the purchase that they're about to make. I think the Kawasaki Ninja 650 would be a fantastic bike, both first and second. We just beat our previous CBR 300R record of 38 miles per hour through a speed bump with 46 miles per hour through this one. Let's see if we can top that. That was 50, everybody, and I am retiring from speed bump speeding. Oh, that's asking for it, isn't it? Wow, the 650 has a ton of power. I do feel some vibration in the handlebars here. Kind of unsettling. Don't really love it, but at the same time, it makes a little bit of sense given that this is a twin. Um, yeah, the bike is great, though. The ergonomics are something that just speak for themselves. And the rest of it we will jump into right now. Okay, guys, for 2019, the Kawasaki Ninja 650 comes in at... An MSRP starting at $7,399. Now that number goes up to a range between $77 and $7,900 uh, depending on ABS and a couple other little spec features. Um, rather rare to have a range on this bike, but regardless, sub $8,000 for what is a beautiful machine and something that I really think has done a great job of skirting the line of sport and touring. Now, this bike reminds me of my first street motorcycle. I owned a 2009 Yamaha FZ6, so that's both endearing and kind of an insult, because if you think about it, this bike is a 2019. It's 10 years 
that has passed since the creation of that FZ6, and yet this concept remains relatively the same. You take a detuned version of a more impressive engine, you put some higher clip-ons, or rather handlebars on it, you get lower pegs, and you have a bike that has the ability to keep the rider comfortable, protected from the wind, and yet it has enough power to really put a smile on your face. Um, so I guess it's one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For the powerhouse here, we have a 649cc parallel twin, so the buzz in the handlebars that I am getting is a very twinny handlebar buzz, albeit nothing that's overwhelming. I don't think you would numb your hands after a while, and uh, more than anything, it's just torque being uh, converted into your bloodstream, which, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I quite like the looks here. We've got integrated turn signals in the front, which literally are worth their weight in gold if they were just a little bit smaller and tinted. I think this would be an absolutely stunning design cue because these bulky turn signals make all motorcycles look atrocious, as you can see in the rear. Uh, you've got dual disc Nissan calipers in the front, single Nissan in the rear. This model that I am riding today does not have ABS. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, I am living on the edge. Does it have ABS? <sighs> it's starting to become more and more difficult to tell because I don't see the ring in the front, nor a sensor. We'll all be damned, I don't know, and it really doesn't matter to me, but to, hey, it matters to you. Make sure if you do buy the ABS one that you confirm with the dealership that it's the ABS model. I don't think that this one is because it's missing something vitally important, which is an ABS sensor. This bike produces 48.5 pound-feet of torque and and roughly 65 horsepower. Now, don't quote me on the horsepower figure because it's actually a relatively difficult thing to find. Kawasaki very openly tells you the torque but hides that horsepower figure for outside research, which means that you're gonna get weird answers. So I got all sorts of things between 60 and 70 horsepower depending on the dyno and the conditions of the day. But horsepower is relative. If you weigh 160 pounds, then 60 horsepower is a lot. If you weigh 240 pounds, then it's going to be like a single horse pulling an entire 18-wheeler. And that's where me and my tubby, lubby, chubby body have been. Um, no, but genuinely, this parallel twin produces a beautiful amount of power. The 31.1-inch seat height makes my 30-inch inseam very usable on this motorcycle. I can flat-foot this bike because when you are sitting on it and compressing the tank, uh, you get a little bit closer to the ground. The other thing is it's very narrow. Look at this. This is incredibly narrow for a seat. That's exactly what you want to look for in, uh, well, a bike that's going to help the vertically impaired like myself. As I said earlier, we do have that analog tachometer with digital features and, of course, the old-school light-ups on the left side for ABS, uh, for fuel, for neutral, for engine, for issues, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, this Ninja 650, it, it's, it's not a technological masterpiece or marvel in any way, shape, or form. It's not pushing the pace when it comes to the uh, kind of odd mid-sport touring category, but it is brilliant at what it does. It's an absolutely exceptional motorcycle, and I think for sub $8,000, it makes a lot of sense, both as a first bike, and I would honestly say that this is something that you could practically buy and ride as your uh, first motorcycle just as much as your second. I might have just said as your first, but what I meant is this is a great bike as your second bike, but it would be fairly suitable as a first-time rider's motorcycle. We've got a 425-pound curb weight, a four-gallon gas tank, 31.1-inch seat height. You know, all those numbers are basically all you need to know from a chassis perspective. It is relatively heavy, albeit it is a full, full-size motorcycle. I always call it, it's a, it's a mid-class, but it's a full-size bike. I mean, you know, the, the mid-class is the engine, the, the size is the size and the nature of this thing. It's, you know, quite a large machine. Um, I know that you, are guy, you guys are going to be pissed that I'm not riding on twisty roads. I am equally, if not more infuriated, that there are very few twisty roads. Now, the gentlemen over at Cycleplex, Alamo Cycleplex, were incredibly helpful. They, they desperately uh, tried to show me the, the kind of direction of where to go, but uh, it's almost 100 degrees today, and those twisty roads are in a very undisclosed location. 
You know why? Because I've never been to San Antonio. This is my first time in San Antonio, by the way. So you're taking this journey with me, and as much research as I do on Google Maps before these trips, well, the minute you step foot on a new bike that you've never ridden in a city you've never been to, you get lost. Uh, the good news is I know how to get back from here, so we're going to go do some more riding, a little bit of highway stuff, and just talk a bit more about this glorif glorious machine. If you are looking for twisty road riding, I guarantee you that there are other moto vloggers who not only ride this bike during reviews but own it that have probably taken it to very exciting places at is it is a very exciting and capable bike so go give them a subscribe and follow dude oh um I don't know what I did to deserve that but it was amazing thank you The transmission is buttery smooth. I mean, it's maybe one of the finer transmissions I've used on any motorcycle, let alone something that's considered a mid-weight, rather standard bike with not a lot of crazy features on it. Uh, that's just engineering, Kawasaki engineering at its finest. Wow, that sounds so good. Can we just get a loop of that? Oh my god, I almost wish the bike was slower so I'd have to be full throttle more frequently. Here comes the slamming of the brakes, which I have grown accustomed to. I will say the comfort on this bike could keep me riding it for quite a long time, even in a hot, hot day like this. Uh, the airflow and protection is, is fantastic. It's both perfect, like it's keeping air off of my body where I don't want it, and it's putting air on my body where I do. A couple things, I really don't want to get hit by a car right here, right now. All right, guys, so we are on our way back to Alamo Cycleplex, and I just want to thank them again. They have been fantastic today. This is the last video I will be shooting for them. I'm not sure what order I'll upload these in, so you've either seen two others, or you're going to see two others, or you've seen one, you see another, you, you get it. That's how it goes. Uh, if you are from the San Antonio area looking for a Ninja 650, hit them up. They are fantastic. They also sell a myriad of power sport items. Uh, if you are not from this area, go to the first link in the description for GoRolic.com and see if you can't find a Ninja 650 in your area. This is a really crazy, really fantastic sub $8,000 bike. I've switched into a weird accent that I'll probably get made fun of for. I've got a police officer tailing me. It's 945 degrees and I'm riding in the streets of a city I've never been to just trying to get back. So that's how it is today. As always, guys, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment down below. I read all the comments, and I will see you on the next one. Can't peace yet. Can't peace yet. Can't peace.